today we will study about the vertebrate skeletal muscle see here this is a diagram of a vertebrate skeletal muscle and skeletal muscles they are bundles of long fibers running along the length of a muscle so each individual fiber is a single cell every fiber is actually a single cell now multiple nuclei present in each fiber multiple nuclei you can see these are the nuclei multiple nuclei are present in each fiber each single nucleus is derived from the embryonic cells that fuse to form the fiber those embryonic cells they fuse to form one fiber so they have multiple nuclei surrounding these nuclei are longitudinal myofibrils which consist of bundles of thick and thin filaments here we can see a single myofibril out of this bundle of muscle fibers we have a single muscle fiber over here and out of this single muscle fiber we have this myofibril which we have enlarged over here so you should not confuse between what is a muscle fiber what what are muscles what is single muscle fiber and what is a myofibril now myofibrils in muscle fibers are made up of repeating sections called sarcomeres what is a sarcomere this whole thing from here to here this whole encircled part of this myofibril is a sarcomere a sarcomere is a unit of skeletal muscle we'll get mcq asking what is a unit of skeletal muscle then we have to reply as sarcomere when the sarcomeres are aligned side by side in a myofibril you can see this is one sarcomere this is another sarcomere so they are aligned side by side they provide the typical banded or striated or dark and light appearance to skeletal muscles here if we enlarge this diagram we can very well see that the muscle myofibrils they are dark and light so the entire muscle it will look banded or striated or dark and light a now a fact we must know is a muscle shortens while contracting but the actin and myosin filaments we'll study later these are the actin and myosin filaments in the lower diagram they remain the same length here also an mcq can be asked that actin and myosin filaments do they shorten or they, do they expand or increase in size during muscle contraction no it's only the muscle which we see as it is shortening but actin and myosin filaments they remain the same length now we see the structure of a single sarcomere this is the diagram of a sarcomere which we have enlarged from this picture from here in this sarcomere we see thick and thin filaments these braided kind of filaments they are actually the thin filaments and they are known as actin this is actin here also and alternating each actin filament we have these myosin filaments this purple structure they are myosin filaments actually this whole is myosin filament it contains head and tail and all these things so these are known as thick filaments you see the thickness this is the myosin filament and the actin filaments they are thin the detailed structure of these filaments we'll study in the next uh, video but right now we know that alternating filaments of actin and myosin they constitute the sarcomere now if we look at the structure more deeply we see that this actin filament is up to here this actin filament is up to here this is one sarcomere from here to here so the actin filaments ending here from one sarcomere are joining the actin filament of other sarcomere at this line actin 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 so where they all meet this is known as the z line z line this is the end of one sarcomere so again you can an mcq can be asked what constitutes a z line so at z line we have the ends of actin filaments because they start from here 
now the point where only myosin filaments are there see there is no actin filaments in this whole zone so this is the m line mcqs are based on these facts m line what constitutes the m line so we don't have actin filaments over here what constitutes the z line so we have only actin then um thick filaments and filaments we already know now sarcomere from where to where it ends it is between two z lines we know it very well now now what is a sliding filament theory this sliding filament theory explains the uh, muscle contraction procedure at the level of a sarcomere myosin molecule now we see this myosin this has a head and a tail so a myosin molecule it is a tail and a head tail will adhere to the tail of other myosin molecules hence the myosin filament remains well bound all these tails are actually joined so it is well bound these are all tails of this myosin filament myosin is racket shaped like this so this tail this is the tail this is the head of the tail now the head can bind atp hydrolysis of bound atp occurs myosin is converted to a high energy form that binds to actin then a cross bridge is formed this is the head of myosin this is actin here a cross bridge will form then head returns to low energy form as it helps to pull the thel filament towards the center of sarcomere see this is the thin filament this is the thin filament now the binding of the head a racket like action of the head on this actin will cause myosin is striking and the actin will move where the actin will move towards the center so that's what they are saying it helps to pull the thin filament towards the center of sarcomere now atp molecule binds to myosin head cross bridge is disrupted releasing the myosin head from the actin filament repeated cycles of bindings and release are required in muscle contraction so when a muscle will contract the size of the m line will reduce why it will reduce because actin filaments will move close it will move close so this area which was previously occupied only by myosin some actin will also come inside so it will be thinner during muscle contraction